Hello, uh, my name is Thomas Abraham James. I'm the president and CEO of Pulsar Helium Inc. As the name suggests, Pulsar is a dedicated helium exploration and development company with projects in the USA and Greenland. Thomas, good to see you. Um, thanks for coming back on the show. Um, We've spent a little bit uh, earlier earlier this year. Time for a quick catch up for the end of the year. You've had a pretty good response to the news about the uh, seismic survey. Tell us a little bit more. Certainly, yeah, the seismic survey we put that out on Tuesday, and uh, you know, wonderful reaction. Uh, the phone the phone actually hasn't stopped ringing, which is lovely. So it's got to, it's worked. Uh, but the seismic survey is uh, something that we we started just after listing. Uh, we've now got the uh, the the data from it. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, really exceeds expectations. Uh, we always knew that this type of survey would give us that uh, knowledge and depth that we really needed. Uh, and uh, yes, it's, it's really imaged up uh, where the gas was intersected in the discovery well is that basically where the uh, velocity anomaly begins, and then persists at depth, and then it continues laterally as well. In fact, it's, uh, it's open-ended in two directions, uh, and that's purely because the survey didn't cover enough ground, so uh, couldn't be happier with it. And and also with it, we, the, the discovery well was drilled uh, without the data, so it's a bit cart before the horse. So it's quite now it's nice now to have the other typical data you get first that really substantiates the result of that ten and a half percent helium discovery well. So wonderful news, and I think there's nothing better. Instead of hearing me waffle on, all people have to do is look at that picture, and you could see you know that bright green anomaly. And I think it really does speak a thousand words. Right. Okay. Um, unfortunately, you're going to have to talk to me, though. So, <laughs> in the other meantime, um, we, it's a slightly, like, he's a slightly esoteric, uh, you know, commodity in the sense that not many people know much about it. So, I, want, I just want to kind of get a few variables down pat here so I understand it. So, you, you're talking about where your gas containing 10.5% helium. Is that good? Is that average? Is, how, do, how do I read that? Yeah, what does it mean exactly? Um, so the uh, the industry standard is that any raw gas that has 0.3% helium or more uh, is interesting for commercial viability. Uh, and this is when we're looking at primary helium, so where you're not producing uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, so most of the world's helium is a byproduct of hydrocarbons, so it doesn't really matter what the helium concentration is. But for that standalone 0.3%, uh, Ten and a half percent, from what we could see, it's the it's the second highest uh, discovery in North America. Right. So we're 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 at the right end of the scale, which is good. It was good news. Now you've got a little bit of data off the back of this seismic survey. Um, you do have that previous um, drill hole, but what do you do next? What, what what's this data encourage you to do? And then how do you fund that? Okay, so what we've got is uh, we have some other data in our possession as well. So additional geophysics, which is gravity and uh, magnetic data, standard data to acquire uh, for this type of uh, resource. Now we're blending it all together. So we're putting it into the machine and then that will basically fine tune the, the reservoir model even more so. Uh, so that's something that will be in the next few weeks that will be coming out as well. Uh, I don't think this one's going to have any sort of game changes. It'll be more just finessing it a little bit, fine tuning. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, and then the uh, in the meantime, we've been preparing for the drilling. So the, the site prep is all done. Uh, the uh, the permits are all in place. Now we twiddle our thumbs and wait until uh, the middle of February when the drilling commences. So that's the next big milestone, the appraisal well. Okay. And at and, and, and how they all sound it again, because you know, I've got a background in oil and gas, and, I, and, I, and I'm leaning slightly towards that thought process in terms of how you kind of manage that field. Um, so with the, with the modeling and then the, the, plan, the drill planning and targeting, et cetera, can you give us a little insight into how that works? Sure. Well, actually, with this one, there's very little science involved with the appraisal well. We drill at 20 meters from the discovery and we just drill down deep. <laughs> so uh, the uh, the size of it gives us certainly more encouragement that uh, going deeper is the right thing to do because it looks very thick. So that uh, the original discovery basically just went to the top. As soon as it encountered the gas, it then stopped. What we'd like to see is, okay, how big is that reservoir? If we go beneath that, is there another, another reservoir? We're we looking at a stacked reservoir system. Uh, and then once we complete the, the, the well, we'll then have the, the flow rate readings uh, and we can give all that data to the uh, the, the, the resource en uh, engineers. And then with the seismic, they can then use that to constrain uh, the size of the reservoir. So it will give us a much more believable number post-drilling. Right. Okay. Okay. And um, 
with with the drill. So you have you have you, do you say you have you've got to assess the data and then you will do the you will do the drilling. I know it's simple, but um, that the, there's going to need to be some semblance of, of a plan as to you know how far you go down, how much money you're going to need to be able to to do that, whether or not you you know try and come at it from another angle or not. So. Again, I just I want to add a little bit more detail. Only because it's just yeah, no, it's a, an it. unusual commodity, right? We're taking a cautious approach. So with that discovery, we're, we're drilling right next to it just so that uh, we, we replicate that discovery. Uh, what we're seeing in the seismic data is that there's other areas certainly look interesting. Uh, some of them are you know, flashed up. That, uh, you know, possibly we're looking at a thicker area of interest. Uh, and I think that though it's prudent uh, to take that cautious approach, replicate the uh, the original discovery, uh, have that with all the applicable uh, you know, gas testing equipment, which wasn't used in the original discovery well. And then once we have that, then any follow up drill programs will then start to go off into the into the blue sky, the other areas which have been identified as looking very interesting. Okay, so you, you've got the grade, you now need the scale. So again, what's the, what's the process for sort of building out the scale? I'm starting the 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 size of the opportunity um, in front of you because I'm, I'm looking for things which kind of would get the juices flowing, get people excited about what you've got. You're, like I said, we'll talk about the, the thematic in a second and, and use cases, etc. But you've got a job ahead of you to kind of grow the company, you know, drive that share price, and I'm, I'm looking towards the things that will do that. And, and presumably, size is important. So how do you, how do you do that uh, with that? So the the area of interest, let's call it, in the immediate vicinity of this discovery is an area of about seven square kilometers uh, in, in plan view. And then we've got a thickness that ranges from 600 meters to a kilometer, roughly. So that's our area of interest. Uh, so we'll be, uh, when we drill the the, uh, the appraisal well in the immediate vicinity around that well, we'll have quite a good constraint. And then beyond that will be then more your prospectus resource. So the, the, the less... Uh, uh, sort of uh, yeah, a, a, a level of confidence, uh, lower level of confidence because it's further away. Uh, so there's that. In terms of the overall gas in place, look, it, it is too early for me to say that. That will be what we will be uh, talking about when waxing lyrical about is after the um, the appraisal well. But one thing I can say now is that with primary helium exploration, uh, a lot of other helium explorers out there, they've got helium concentrations about half a percent, let's say. So the beauty of having 10.5% is that you only need to find one twentieth the amount of raw gas that they have, and you've got the same size resource. So, you know, grade is king, like everything. So, that helps. It it, it, it does help. And so, help me with the, then I'm saying the timing of this because if you kind of got that kind of grade, you don't need to find as as much. Um, there must be a sort of, I guess, a sort of standard size that you think this this is good enough to be economic. If we can get, I know you can't comment now, but if we can yeah. get it to X size, then it's good, and we know we can get the economics right, and we'll we'll kind of get motoring on this thing. So, in in a way, yeah. not, not only does grade help you, um, you know, with with not having to find so much, but it also expedites the time component, and time is money in this market. So, how what was the process going forward in, in terms of that time frame? Uh, internally, the way that we look at it is that uh, we look to, I mean, our objective in the immediate term is to find a, a resource slash reserve base. They can justify, say, five years of production now, you know, and to ultimately liquid helium production is what we're looking at. That's the price. Uh, so, you know, that's that's uh, I think quite achievable. Uh, you know, now seeing that we're not looking at a, a sort of neurology play, we're not looking at something quite small. We think this is very much a regional play. I mean, we know that 160 kilometers away, there's two percent helium coming out of the ground there. So, certainly not isolated. So, really, the, the team's belief is that we want to have enough. Uh, reserve base, uh, you know, as a minimum uh, for five years of production of liquid helium, and uh, and justifying the the capital outlay for liquid helium facility. Now, you know, for those, they're anywhere between sort of ten and fifty million, depending on the size. Of it. Um, so that's the the mindset. Okay, and and, and talk to me about given given where you are in the world. Um, yeah. In terms of access to the equipment that you need drilling, you're, suge you're suggesting to me, or I'm taking away that you don't need to do too too much drilling. Certainly not like sort of you know, con conventional, you know, um, oil or or, or, or gas plays. Um, and the, obviously, the grade helps and so forth. But um, are you finding any kind of difficulties in terms of getting equipment, the cost of that equipment? Um, 
uh, down in Minnesota? No, look, uh, there's uh, in a neighboring state in the in the Dakotas. There's quite a lot of work there for, for oil uh, drilling there. So the rigs that they have are applicable uh, for use for helium exploration as well. So, uh, so yeah, the neighboring states. And then also in Michigan, uh, there's some uh, uh, rigs available there. So we actually uh, don't have any issues with rig availability. Um, so we're quite pleased. In fact, we've had uh, numerous companies reach out to us. Uh, the rig that we have contract is is the one that we think is most ideal for the job. Um, I think probably in terms of the the, the costs of it, uh, probably the, the 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 largest one is that when you're just doing a small drill program, one two wells, is that your mobilization and demob is quite significant. Um, so that's something there. And so certainly, I think that for the future, should there be larger drilling programs, then that will make it a more sort of uh, reduced overall drill cost per well. Uh, but otherwise, uh, certainly, uh, all, all the uh, required equipment, the labor force, the skilled labor, uh, everything's there. And in fact, we're only, uh, was it about uh, 15 kilometers away uh, from the big iron ore operations, the largest iron ore mines in North America. So whilst we're not using excavators, uh, there is a lot of ancillaries there that we can that certainly benefit us. Um, so in terms of just broader logistics. Right, okay. And then and just in terms of putting this together, it, I mean, you, you've got a few sort of partnerships, et cetera. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the, the team structure today and, you know, and how that is going to need to evolve as you kind of move through to trying to, you know, try to capture all of this? Yeah, the team's quite nimble at the moment. Like, it's not a large team. Um, so we've got uh, people, so we've got a dedicated operations manager, uh, Michael Sturdy. So he's over on site right now. Uh, we then have a, a technical manager, Josh Blewett. Uh, so he's been looking after all the uh, the geology. Uh, we've then got uh, you know, our board of directors. Uh, we've, got, we've got our people in uh, in Minnesota as well. So uh, Phil Larson, geologist there, uh, and he was actually present at the rig at the time of the discovery. Uh, and then the rest is, is contract staff, so this early stage. But certainly I think that post-success, uh, it would be nice to, to build out the team. And also just because what we're looking at in Minnesota is – it's no small undertaking. It's actually quite a large area that uh, we're, we're looking at. Uh, so with our, our leasing is ongoing uh, and then obviously assessing them and the amount of just sheer technical data we're going to have, uh, it's going to be quite significant. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit what's going on in the market, the healing market more broadly? Because it seems a little bit sort of erratic in places and, um, it, you know, not, not everyone's performing, <laughs> if we put it like that. Um, yeah. But what, what's that? What's that doing to the supply demand fundamentals for for helium at the moment? Obviously, byproduct of you know oil and gas. But wh- how do you insert yourself into what's going on? And, and in fact, give me a backdrop of what is going on out there. Yeah, I uh, look for, for for a commodity where the first thing that I knew about was party balloons. It's, it's turned out to be yeah, just fascinating from uh, technical to geopolitical issues to all sorts. So it's it's quite scary almost to be honest so uh, i mean with the, the, the at the moment um uh demand is constrained by supply uh that's the big one so the the the, the market can take more helium it's just not available uh so there's there's a number of other smaller companies out there who are looking at these primary helium occurrences but uh with their production it's quite small it's not going to change uh the the supply crunch that's persisted uh, the reason for the supply crunch is that I think there's a little bit of complacency, uh, to be honest, and, and that is in particular from um, the, the, the U.S. federal government had the world's largest standalone reserve of helium, and uh, it was only about 10 years ago that they realized that this was running out. Uh, so then they started to, to ration the sales of it by auctions, and uh, as of uh, what is it, February next year, they're accepting bids for the remaining gas uh, to then be sold off to uh, to a private enterprise, um, so that's uh, you know the, the most reliable source of helium is effectively gone. Um, so there's that. So that's uh, then allowed for new entrants to the market. Uh, so Qatar has now t- uh, taken up the mantle of being the world's largest producer of helium. But a few years ago, Qatar was embargoed, and so helium couldn't get out. So that created another shortage. Um, the other thing too is that helium is extremely hard to transport. Um, you know, putting it on a ship and then sending it across, if it's on that vessel for more than say 25 days, then you start to get leakage of product out of the containers. So it's a reason why it's very important that we're in the USA. We don't have that issue. Um, and then of course with uh, with Russia as well. So that's another source uh, that has now been uh, cut off. So there's there's no one coming to the rescue by the looks of things. But uh, I like to think that uh, you know with what we're seeing in Pulsar, 
we, we may be a, a very welcome surprise uh, to the what is a critical element and uh, people are uh, pleading for it. So, so what's that done to price then? Set it through the roof. It's just incredible. Um, so what was it about, about a decade ago? You're looking at, I mean, the unit of measurement is horrible. It's a, it's a thousand cubic feet in MCF. Uh, but that's, uh, you could typically get the helium for perhaps about $30 uh, about a decade ago. Uh, now there's contracts of that gaseous helium going in excess of $625. And then for liquid helium, which is the the, the, the price, which is the, the, the final product there, that's going for in excess of $1,000. Uh, I'm hearing stories of people paying five or $10,000 uh, for it uh, if they need it at short notice and for something where there's not a spot market people will effectively have to pay whatever it costs because they need it uh so yeah the, and the price every quarter uh we get an update on the price and uh every quarter it goes up okay okay i'm, I'm not sure how i feel about it when, when the price is just, you know it's erratic as that but i guess there's no quick fix for that so the demand is there we, you know you've talked in the past about the various use cases um, that's not going to go away, or, or is it? You can't substitute this helium out of some of those use no. cases, can you? No, you can't. No. Or from balloons. Or from balloons. Well, I mean, that's, the med- that's like med- med- medical use anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a waste, I think. But uh, but the people are looking at MRI scanners and seeing if they can make them operate at uh, yeah. ambient temperature. So far, that hasn't worked. Um, people are still trying. Uh, but if anything, uh, semiconductor demand that's driven it up even higher. And now people are talking about these airships again, about the blimps. Uh, they'll, they're going to take a huge amount of helium. Uh, so I, I just can't see. I mean, otherwise you could use perhaps another gas, but then uh, so we know what happens with hydrogen. Um, so I don't think anybody wants to use uh, that. It's just combustible. Um, so that the benefit of helium is it's enough. So talk to me about the drilling. Um, so, so remind me again, when is it? How long um, will you be drilling for? And how quickly are you going to get information out into the market? Yeah, so it's going to, the drilling is going to occur in uh, mid-February. Uh, as I said earlier, everything's ready to go. We think that the drilling should take about two weeks to uh, to complete, and we're going to have all the equipment out there to, to get all the testing. So, uh, you know, people watching the company won't have to wait. Uh, we'll be providing the, the data as close to real time as we can and the, the results thereof. Um, so I'll be personally going across to Minnesota. Uh, January will be there for the whole drill period. Uh, the team, as I say, our operations manager is already over there. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be, uh, even with the rig set up, uh, we, we invite people to actually come and have a look at it. Uh, so, obviously, not whilst drilling, but uh, beforehand. Uh, so, yeah, um, nothing to hide. So, everything's ready. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, Thomas. Um, look, appreciate you coming on. Exciting times in terms of the, the helium market. Certainly, the prices, they, they, they sound, it sounds extraordinary at the, at the moment. Your job now is to kind of let us know uh, how much of this you've got and, 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 uh, and hopefully quickly after that how economic this thing could be. So I appreciate your time. Stay in touch, okay? Thanks, Matthew. Hopefully the next one will be me in the snow in Minnesota and we'll be talking about exactly those details.